If it's not, we, we, we were always told that, you know, it's this chemical imbalance in the brain that causes uh, depression. And, and you're saying that that's not the case. So if it's not the case, what, what does cause depression? Well, that, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, our research was about what doesn't cause it, not what does cause it. Uh, and as you said, we found that, you know, if you put all the research together that's been done on serotonin and depression in all the different areas, the receptors and the um, serotonin transporter and metabolites and things, it doesn't show that, uh, that there is a link between abnormalities in serotonin and depression. Of course, depression could be caused by other biological factors. Uh, some people have said, oh, you know, it's more complicated than that. But the main biological theory of depression has been this idea that uh, it, it's a chemical imbalance. And of course, that's been the main justification for using antidepressants, the idea that they are helping depression by rectifying a chemical imbalance. So if it's, if it's not a chemical imbalance, I think we're left with the idea that depression is uh, a, a reaction to life circumstances like other moods and emotions are. Uh, and because it's, um, you know, a negative reaction, it's a reaction to things going wrong in people's lives or things that have gone wrong in the past. I, 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 I took great interest in this report because I've thought for a long time people have wanted to be quick to medicalise, as it were, a condition and quick to prescribe for a condition. I'd say that was a sticking plaster rather than actually getting to the root cause of uh, a, an issue. And that's what I was hoping you were trying to expose here. Was I right in that hope? Yeah, yes, absolutely. That's, I mean, that's been my thought for a long time, that it's, it's been too easy in a way, too simple to talk about depression as a, as a medical condition and, and, and to recommend a medical solution. Whereas actually it's a, you know, it's often a very complicated situation that, that people are struggling with that is in, you know, individual. So it's different in, in each case and each person needs a different solution and a different sort of help. How many people do you think are on antidepressant tablets and that, that shouldn't be? Is it, I mean, is, is, that, is, it every, is everybody who's on them, are they, should they not be on them or is it, is it just a, a small number who shouldn't be on them? So, so, so it's difficult to say because what, what this research suggests is that we're thinking about them in the wrong way. If antidepressants are not working by correcting a chemical imbalance... Um, we have to think how else they might be working, what else they might be doing. And we know that they are drugs that change normal brain chemistry. And because they do that, they make everyone feel a bit different in, in different ways. And some of them uh, have this effect of numbing people's emotions. So, so numbing emotions might be useful for some people in some you know, acute situations, but it might, it, it might be a harmful effect in the long term. It might stop people working out what's wrong and, and, and getting through and developing other ways of managing their feelings. And of course, changing brain chemistry in itself also might have other harmful consequences in the long term. That might be why so many people, uh, undoubtedly is why you know, so many people have difficulty coming off these drugs, have, have real trouble withdrawing from them, which has become more and more apparent over le recent years. I thought that, you know, is this a way to just bypass natural human pain? So if somebody dies, if a relationship ends, if things go wrong, you are going to feel depressed in one way or another. So I'm wondering, we all want quick fixes, but that will I have long term problems that you'll be unable to cope with things that go wrong in your life long term? I, I'm, I mean, that, that wasn't what we were looking at in the research and I can't say uh, give you a certain answer to that, but I, I think that's possible, and I think I think this mass use of antidepressants that we've got at the moment for you know for situations where people are struggling with life difficulties might indeed stop people developing better ways of coping with uh, negative emotions and you know anxiety, depression, and difficulties, and developing the confidence that that they have the ability to do that.